Now let's look at this example. Okay. So this example, you have three elements here. So you have a beam and a spring. And you have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Okay. So 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. So you have three elements. All right. Now, without um, without we, we without we go into the detail, just ask yourself: Are you able to tell the size of capital K that you're going to get by looking at this diagram? Ask yourself: huh? Just self-check. Are you able to estimate the size of K of this system? What is the size of this matrix? Brian, you able to estimate? Uh, Chia, yes, it's stand by. Huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, what is the size of matrix that you expect to get? Six. Six, six times six. six. Okay, Brian, answer is six times six. Chia, what is your answer? Chia, are you there? Same answer. You also get six. So what is your answer? Uh, I think it's six. So also six. All right. Just test, huh? just early evaluation. This is beam, right? Beam. So each one will give you two displacement, right? This one, V1, rotation one. This one, V2, angle two. Point three, V3, angle three. What about element three? Element three is a spring. Spro spring. You still remember spring when you when you study spring and you just complete your test one, right? Spring, what is the displacement you have on the spring? So yeah, what is the displacement? For example, this one is 0.3, this is 0.4. And this is the reference axis. Maybe this is your x. What is the displacement at 0.3? Uh, U. U, U3, right? This one, U4, right? Correct? Uh, so here, if you if you take this concept, the one diagram that below, however, this one is in Y direction. Uh, your X is like this. Uh, you X is like this, but you're in a Y direction. So Y direction, if you look at the spring spring alone, element three, your V need to change to V. Your U need to change to V because it's in Y direction. So you have V three. And then this one become V four. So how many unknown you have here? How many unknown? Can you count from the screen here? Is it six or more than six? How many unknown here? Unknown means V1 consider one unknown, uh, rotation one consider one unknown, and so on. How many unknown you have here? Brian, how many unknown? Eight. Eight. So what, how many unknown? Brian, new answer is eight. So what is the new unknown? How many unknown you have? If you look at the screen here. Tia, how many unknown? How many new unknown uh, or how many unknown on this system?
Seven. Seven. So, what what is your guess? So, are you there? Oh uh, yes. Yeah. How many? You can count, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. The correct answer is seven. Brian, you do understand why seven? Ah? No, sir. Okay. Let's say I count V1 is Su. V2 is Chia. V3 is Brian. V4, Ashmao. Oh, no, fancy. Ah, so how many member you have here? Seven. You're seven, right? Yeah. Do you count two Brian in the class? Ah? No, no. No, right. Ah, so you have seven. Okay, all right. So you, we are expecting seven times seven in the matrix later on. Yes. Uh, early, if you look at the beam, yes. This only correct for beam. Six times six is for beam. However, this is beam plus spring. So you have to look at the whole system. You have three elements, and you have to recall what is the spring displacement. You only displacement only spring only only uh, displaced in one direction only. So in this case, the direction is in y. So you have v. 3 for spring and V4 for spring. So if you count the unknown, you have 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. V3 repeated, we don't need to count. 7. Okay, so we are expecting 7 times 7. And the unknown that you see F equal KD later on. Your D, already, I already mentioned, your D have 7. V1, rotation 1, rotation 2, V2, and V3, rotation 3, and V4. Okay, your D have 7, K have 7, F also have 7. Eh? Your F also have 7. So what are the F you have? F for beam, you have force and moment. So F1, M1, M2 also, okay, F2... M2, this is a beam, right? Beam, uh, beam point, you look at the beam, point three also have F3, M3. Uh, look at the spring. Spring, spring, the force that only involve is F. So F3, F4. So for spring, you have F3, so F3, you repeat already, we don't need to count uh, because we already counted for beam. So F3 is the same. The same force, same point. So you only need to count once. So point 0.4, you have F4. So when you write your F component later on, your F component consists of F1, M1, F2, F2, M2, F3, M3, and F4. So you have 7 also for the force. You have 7, K is 7 times 7. D, you have 7. Okay. Try to understand this general concept, then you can solve any question uh, for this module. Okay, get this general picture first. When you can understand this one, uh, you are good to do for this chapter already. Any question you want to ask me? Anything you don't understand why suddenly 7, uh, why force? I can claim as 7, K I can claim as 7 times 7, displacement I can count 7, and so on. Anything that you're not clear? Right, so it seems every one of you clear. All right, now I still ask the same question. Chia, are you there? Chia, what is the external force you have in the system? How many external force you have? One. One. 
So you only have external force. One. Okay. All right. Now, uh, you, uh, again, you look at the question is almost the same. You need to find the displacement, rotation, global uh, element forces, and so you are give you are given the external force E given, I given, uh, K of the spring is given, and so on. All right. Now this question is combining uh, chapter two, the spring, uh, chapter. The, the chapters for the spring and also for beam together. All right. So uh, now I want you to focus on the steps itself. Actually, we keep repeating the same steps. Huh? So whether you check whether you, you know how to spot the same the procedure. OK, now you see uh, the first steps. We look at the beam, the beam first, because beam start from point one. So one, two, three. So we solve for the beam first. So you write for the K matrix, K small k equal to this one, standard already. Okay, then label with your pencil, V1 rotation 1, V2 rotation 2, and so on. You look for the same for element 2. Okay, element 2, beam. Element 2, you have K equal to EI, and so on, same. But the parking ticket is a different because element 2 connecting point 2 and point 3, so this one you write V2, angle 2, V3, angle 3. Okay, now because beam, this system beam have two elements, so you have you have completed these two. This one give you one to two marks. This one also give you one to two marks in test or exam. If you write this one, you write element one, K matrix, element two, K matrix, you get some point there. All right, and actually we keep repeating the same steps. Then element three, the spring. Recall spring uh, equation. Your k is this one. Your k is uh, your k is uh, k pos positive k minus k minus k k. All right, and then you label their their coordinate. So this one is. Uh, you, this one is V3, V4. Again, this one, because our direction is in Y direction, so this one changed to V3, this one changed to V4 already. Okay. Although this equation is F equal to KD. We change according to the uh, orientation of the system. Okay, and then you label with your pencil. V3, V4. Then after you have element one matrix, element two matrix, element three matrix, the next step you combine everything become uh, the global matrix K, where we already explained you'll get seven times seven matrix. Okay, so how you write seven times seven? Point one, two, three, four, right? Let me write a draft for you. So how do you prepare the, the template for your big K? You just break, you just uh, follow the, the point. So point one, you have V1, rotation one. Then followed by point two, V2, rotation two. Followed by V3, V3, rotation three. Okay, then followed by point four. Point three you already have already, although it includes uh, spring because we we already agree that uh, V3 it's share with the beam, although the spring having V3, but V3 is the same as uh, the beam at point three. So V3 is here. So point four, point four only have one. So you continue with point four, V4. So this is how you label with the pencil. You have seven times seven. V, uh, V1 rotation one, V2 rotation two, V3 rotation three, and V4. Same with this one. Then you park the number in this K matrix, global K matrix. All right. Okay, you park, huh? Park the number. So I will not do the parking for you. I just 
uh, show you the concept. So you just share. The green box is what you see on the screen here. You just import the K into the green box area. Um, yeah. Uh, just need to remind you when you export, right? The purple color, this one, no problem. Only when you export the K here, the K here, remember there's a external uh, EI divided by, sorry, it should be L cube. Huh? There's a typo error there. It should be the L cube for this one because when you import them, you import here. Huh? When you come to Spring, huh, this is the area student also make mistakes. When you export this K into here, Remember, there's a EI divided by L3 here. So this one, the whole thing, when you export here, it have to be divided by EI divided by L cube to cancel the factor here. Okay, I repeat. Huh? For element one and two, beam, no problem. When you export, the EI divided by L cube, this uh, type of error is the L cube because you export the constant value here. So when you import the element tree value, because element tree is spring, spring only have K matrix, but there's, there's no EI divided by L cube in the spring. So when you import them into this global matrix, because, because this global matrix is, is included the constant value here. So when you import, make sure to remember you divide this K, divide by EI divided by L cube when you put inside here. Okay, yeah? This is just a side note. Remember, because this one elementary don't have the EI divided by L cube when you import into the global matrix. So you need to balance the equation. Okay, because divide and then you times this one, you will cancel out the constant value. All right, so the red color box here that I label here is for elementary. Remember when you import, remember to cancel the EI divided by L for the spring by dividing EI divided by L cube. Remember to divide huh, when you import. Type of error here, L cube. All right, so I'm showing you the, the answer. When you import everything, you will get K matrix global in this term. That's why you're seeing this one. You're seeing this one. You're seeing this one. And remember, in your answer, don't use symmetry. You need to copy the full answer for these sides. Symmetry means it's a mirror of the top one. Okay? This is your mirror axis. Okay? So once you import, you get your global matrix, get this one. And I label again for you. You have three element there. After that, you after you get your K, you write F equal to KD back again. And you solve for the unknown. Okay, you solve for the unknown. And this is just to simplify. Lah. So K prime is uh, KL cube divided by EI and so on, just to simplify the the equation. And after that, you solve for all the unknown by applying the bounding condition. For example, point one cannot move, V1, zero, and so on. So V1, zero, you cancel, uh, not cancel, you close the matrix. Rotation at point one also cannot rotate, so you close the second one. At point two, point two cannot move down, right? So you, you close V2. Then point four also cannot move, so you close point four. So you have remaining, okay, remaining this one. So you only left up three, 
three matrix or three equation to solve. And then after that, you import the external force that you're remaining. So for example, F3Y, this one, is 50 kilonewton. Remember, your Y is positive going up. So when you import the value, remember to put in the negative sign. Force is pointing down. Okay, there's a negative sign there. Next, you just solve the three equation using the online calculator that I show you in the first session. You, you substitute all the numbers there, you solve, you can solve this three equation. Okay, this is the, in the general equation. Okay, but the concept is just ask you to solve three equation. Okay, you'll get this three answer if you uh, substitute all the value inside there. And then for V3, you get this one. V, uh, rotation 2, you get this one. Rotation 3, you get this one. Okay, unit is in meter. Rotation in radian. Okay, important, the unit. Huh? Then after that, once you get the one, you substitute back to the general uh, matrix F equal to KD with the capital F, capital M, and this one is capital K and D because just now you, you already solved for your D already, solved for your K. So you have seven times seven matrix times seven. So just now I show you the online calculator. This whole thing you can put inside A. This one you can put in B, then use a calculator, you key in all these things, you calculate, then you press the button A times B, you get answer for your F. Okay, you get all this number in the calculator. Okay, then after that, you draw free body diagram for the beam. Okay, so for example, this is a free body diagram of the beam. Your, I'll just show you one. Huh? So F1Y, you get negative 69 kilo Newton. So in your free body diagram, negative is going down. So you the arrow is pointing down. However, the magnitude is positive. Huh? Magnitude is positive, arrow pointing down. For a moment, you get 69 kilo Newton meter, negative. Moment in our definition, positive anticlockwise. So you have a negative sign, it becomes clockwise. So that's why in this diagram you're seeing clockwise. However, the magnitude is positive. 69 kilo Newton meter. The, the direction for the moment, according to your answer, your answer is negative. So it's clockwise direction. You apply the same for point two and point three. Okay, any question? on the numbers that you see on the screen here. Anything that uh, you doesn't know how to calculate. For example, uh, point four. Point four, you just use Hooke's law because point four for the force, you know that spring equal to Kx, right? For the spring. You know the displacement at point number three or point number, yeah? For point number three, you know how far this point is moving down. You know V3. So you take K times V3, you get the force of the spring. Okay, because F equal to Kx, Hooke's law for the spring. Okay, so straight away you can uh, get, you take V3 minus, uh, not minus, V3 multiply K, you get 3.5 kilonewton. All right. So, okay, there's no negative lah. Huh? Type of error again. Okay, because we for this F4, we are focusing on the spring. F4 is spring. So spring, uh, you need to see whether, uh, what is the force inside the spring. So if you look at the beam itself, the arrow is pointing up for the spring, okay? Uh, you just imagine you are the beam and then there's an external force pressing it. 
So what do you feel if you stand at point three? You will feel that the spring is punching in your body, right? If you stand here, you press at this point. If you stand here, you feel that the spring is punching in the, the point three. So that's why the arrow is going opposite of uh, 50 kilonewton here. All right. So any question before we move to the next example? Any question? I'll see. Clear, everyone are clear. Okay, good. Let's look at this example. So as, as same, this is more simpler question. Uh, as we go on, as you understand the concept, how we solve it, it will be the same. So the you, you read the question actually the same. You need to find the displacement, rotation, moment, force, and so on. And then you'll be given the, the, the E and I value for the beam. All right, so if you look at this, 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 uh, this, this diagram here, uh, again, test your understanding. Eh? Um, Brian, how many elements you have in this diagram? Two, sir. Two, okay. Brian, continue. Eh? The question I will ask you. Can you estimate the size of the K matrix in your answer? If you look at this system, what is the size of the K matrix? You're looking at beam. Uh, how many points? How many points? Ah, six. Huh? We have six times six. Huh? Because you have three points. One, two, three. Each point gives you two displacements, so you have six. So this is the general idea. Then after that, you build F equal KD. So from here, you know that curly bracket, curly. So you know that K is seven times seven. So D, uh, sorry, six times six. D also have six because you have six, uh, uh, three point six uh, unknown. So each point you give you V1 rotation one. Point two also give you V2 rotation two. Point three, rotation three, V three. So displacement, you have six. Force, for beam, you only look at force and moment. So point one, you have M one, moment one. Point two, you also have F two, moment two. F three, uh, point three, you also have F three, moment three. Okay, so you have six here. Uh, Right now, if you look at the 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 guideline or the steps, huh? After you look at the question, the first step you write the K matrix. Element one, you write the K matrix. You get one to two point two marks for the for the answer, right? Again, huh? the step always the same. Element one, you write the K A K equal to what? you get one to two marks here. Okay, then label with the pencil, the ticketing, the ticket position. So element one, point one and point two. So you have V1, uh, rotation one, V2, rotation two. Same element two, write this one with the superscript two there. You get one to two marks and then label with the pencil, uh, just to test, uh, Chia, what is the label that you, sh you should label on top of the this four column here? V2, 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 rotation two, and V3, rotation three. Okay, good. All right. Then after that, you just combine superposition. Combine them into a big matrix like what you see here. So again, this is V1, rotation 1, V2, rotation 2, V3, rotation 3. Same with the side here. Then you pop all the number into this one. 
So once you get the K matrix, again, K matrix will score maybe three to four marks just to import the number. Okay, it depends on the size. The bigger the size you have, the more marks that we will give, be given. Okay. All right. So this one I just label uh, for you to identify the element numbers. Then after that, you write in the F equal to KD. You use boundary condition. After you write F equal to KD, you use boundary condition given V1, 0, because point 0.1 cannot move. So you just use your pencil to close the blow and column again. So point 0.3 cannot move. So yeah, point 0.3 cannot move. So you just close all the point that cannot move, including the rotation. So as you can see here, you reduce six equation into two equation. You only left up F2Y, M2, EI, L divided by uh, EI divided by L cube, and this two times two matrix and V2 rotation two. We reduce to this one. Okay. Yeah. Then we just use a calculator to use. Okay, how do you calculate this one? Uh, Brian, can you? Okay, let's use calculator to to calculate. Huh? I will use these slides. Uh, someone try help help the class. Huh? Calculate this one. What did this will give you? Then we will use the calculator to calculate online calculator. I will show you how to use it. Okay, we sh maybe we spend like maybe 30 seconds just to confirm that number. Just spend some time to. Three, three million. You get about. Uh, okay. Let me get my. Is that three million or something? What is the full number? Uh, if you put in the, do you get three point one one something? I get three one 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 point one one one. Yeah, it's ten power six. six. If if all you agree, this one we get this this number. Yeah, it's about it's about three million. Uh. It's about, three. but in the test later on, if you get three point uh one one, give three decimal places uh, in the test or exam. So uh, Chia, you get this number? Uh, yes. Okay. So uh, we try to solve this one first. Eight times this one fifty six. You know, not 66, uh, 72. Agree? Okay. You guys agree? Mm, all right. Now, to solve this question, you need to pull this whole matrix. You need to calculate this matrix first. Then you need to inverse this matrix because you pull this whole matrix to the left, right? So you, you, this one is what you need to calculate. You inverse the whole thing, then you times negative 10,000 and 2,000 matrix. Then you get the answer. The answer for V2 and rotation two. Okay, let's open up the, the matrix then. Let's calculate. Huh? Okay, I will put my later you let me know uh, the, this one right i'll open up the calculator so if i forget i just go to google and type in matrix calculator i go to the first one and if you look at the slides just now you're having two times two matrix so what we do is that we go here and then we minus the matrix here because we only have two 
2 times 2 and here also 2 times 2. So uh, we just need to key in the matrix first. The matrix here is 24, 0, 0, and this one is 70, 72 just now. So we key in 24, 0, 0, 72. And then after you key in this one, because we are we are want to find the inverse of this one. Remember to times the uh, the constant value here that we calculate just now about three million. So we multiply by so you go here three point one one. We just uh, three point maybe we put in the full number three one 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 one. Three point one one. Okay, although this one very small, but you key in correctly. Then you press you press the multiply by. You will see that you're actually multiplying 3111.111 times the matrix. You get this, this one. Okay, able to follow all of you? Once you get this one in the uh, website, you want to import this one back this answer back to matrix A. So click insert in A. So you go back, you will import this answer back to matrix A. However, in our answer here, this one, we need to inverse because we pull from the right to left. So it, we need to inverse this matrix. So what we do, you just press the find inverse because we already have the multiplication products. So press find inverse, you will find inverse for you. Although here is let us uh, increase into maybe three decimal place. Okay, never mind. We press one more time. Find inverse. So we have still still a small number. So we put back this inverse number back to A. So this is our inverse A. And then we need to times the matrix B with this is one. Minus 10,000 and 20,000. So you go to the here, minus 10,000 and 20,000. So what you do, you just take this matrix, this inverse matrix, you already found already, times matrix B. So what you do, you just press A times B. You will get a very, very small number. Okay, maybe too small for you. If you cannot read it, you just... Uh, yeah, we'll just increase this one to six decimal place. And I will press one more time. Okay, I will get the answer. Okay, the answer is minus 0 0.00134 and 0 0.000089. So if you look at the answer itself, we disagree. I put side by side the PowerPoint slides. If you combine side by side, your V2 is minus uh, 1.34 minus negative 4 meter. And angle is 89, negative 5. Okay, so if, we, if you compare the numbers side by side, you'll get the answer. Any one of you need me to repeat one more time how to do it? Only right. Chia, Sue, Brian managed to understand how to use the online tools. Oh, yes, I understand. Yeah. So practice this one eh, because this is a simple example. The test, when you come to test, like just now, the example just now, you have seven times seven. So you need to play around the metrics here. Okay. Just, just, uh, practice lah. Just go for one or two example using this this matrix, then you you will get the same answer. All right. Next, you get V one, V two from the calculator. Okay. Then you solve. Okay, you solve for the remaining one. So you go for local element one. You solve for element one. Means you you look at the element element one uh, formula. Small f. 
equal KD for the beam. You substitute all the numbers because you already have your uh, V10, rotation 10. You found V2 and you found this one and this one. So basically you are solving four equation there. So by using the same calculator, you just need to put in all the numbers in the calculator. So this one in matrix A, this one in matrix B, you put the number in, press matrix A times matrix B, you will get four number, F1, Y, M1, F2, Y, M2. Okay, you check uh, using the calculator later on. Uh. So you get these four numbers. I put in the purple color, you get all these number. Okay, once you get for element one, you solve for element two, you repeat the same. F equal to KD, you manage to find small f, small m, small f, small m for 0.2 and 0.3. And then you put all this number in a free body diagram like this. So for element one, you draw this free body diagram according to the number you calculate. For example, F1Y positive, magnitude positive, however, the arrow is pointing up because it's positive. F2Y, you get negative sign. So you can see F2Y, magnitude is positive, however, the arrow is pointing now. Moment, 0.1 positive, Positive moment is anti-clockwise. That's why you see anti-clockwise arrow, but the magnitude always positive. Moment at point two also positive. So it's uh, anti-clockwise, but with the um, positive magnitude. All right, you repeat the same for element two. So F2Y is zero. Although it's zero, you just use the arrow point up zero. 0 0.20, uh, 0 0.30, M2 positive, anti-clockwise. So you see the arrow is anti-clockwise, positive magnitude. 0.3 negative, negative is clockwise, positive magnitude. Okay, so these two, you have, this one you score two to three marks for individual diagram. When you come to test, right? Then you draw the shear diagram by using the free body diagram above. You develop the shear diagram. Again, you learn shear diagram in your static or dynamic class. So go ahead and revisit or recall how to draw, how to convert moment uh, the free body diagram into shear diagram. Okay, I will not repeat the the topic to convert free body diagram into shear diagram. Okay, this one already covered in your static or dynamic class. You do the same for element two. Then also do the bending moment diagram. Bending moment diagram. Okay, so revisit. Uh, go and read the previous textbook for static and dynamic. If you don't know how to convert or you forget how to convert from here, free body diagram in shear diagram and also in the bending moment diagram. Okay. Do the same for the second element. All right. Next class, we will look at um, distributor loading. Okay, next class. So this uh, Thursday, we will conclude chapter four already. Okay. So let me stop the recording.